everybody, welcome back to DIY Boomboxes in Texas. My name is Phil, your host. This is part three of a four-part video series showing you how to hook up a dual power boombox, which means we're going to be able to run on a battery and you'll be able to plug it into the wall and charge the battery while it's plugged into the wall and everything's going to stay separate. So if this, your first time seeing this video, um, I suggest go back and watch part one and part two so you'll understand where we are and you'll be caught up. See everything we've done to this point. Okay guys, last time you saw everything, we were painting the getting ready to paint the project. You saw me put on the paracord and drill the holes and everything. So here you go guys, and uh, what do you think? The paint job came out really, really nice. And uh, I think it looks really really good. Paint's all nice and smooth and you can see where we put the holes in there. Now let me show you what these holes are going to be for. I actually changed the design a little bit. We're actually going to put on the amplifier here this little knob is going to be right here to adjust the gain right there in the front. And also the cool thing is right here on the sides uh, this is going to be the voltage meter, USB port, switch number one, switch number two. And these are also going to be our ports for charging the battery and plugging it into the wall. I think I'm going to make this one the charging port and this one plugging into the wall. Looks really, really good. You saw in the other video, we put the paracord on there and we wrapped it. And it looks really good. came out really nice and smooth. Now, if you're going to paint one of these, you've got to let the power... I don't let the power, listen to me. You've got to let the paint sit for at least five or six days to get completely dry. If it's tacky, you're going to leave fingerprints and you're going to mess up the finish. So the, the finish is completely dry. It's been drying for six days now. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is I have everything set up on the bench here. I'm going to show you how all this works. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about the wiring diagram and how we're going to wire all this up. So let me move the camera. We'll be able to see everything a lot more clear. And I'll be right back. Okay, everybody, I'm going to zoom in on this here. See if you can see this diagram. All right, now what we have here in this diagram, let me get something to point with. Let's use orange marker. Okay, here we have the relay in the middle. This is our circuit. This is going to be our 12 volt battery right here. This is going to be our power supply. And this is the plug going out of the power supply. and. This cord right here in the power supply is going to be this cord coming to right here. And this connector right here is going to be this connector right there, as you can see. And that's where the power supply is going to plug in. That's going to be on the outside. So, this is how the circuit's going to be wired up. So if you want to do this, this is what you're going to need to do. Let me adjust this just a little bit here. All right. Now what we have over here coming is the, the pins are numbered on a relay. So the one and two pin, and it doesn't matter which one you make positive or negative. I just made one positive, number two negative. It's just easier that way. And uh, actually, yeah, you do want to do them in a certain order. So number one you want to make positive number two you want to make negative because the output because uh, these these actually go in a line so number nine you want to make positive number ten you want to make negative so right now the power is coming from the battery the relay is turned off so because these are what we call normally closed contacts it's like a this like an electric switch so the switch is closed right now the power runs through the relay to terminals 9 and 10. The hot wire, or the positive wire, comes out of 9, comes over here to the switch, and it also comes over to the second switch. So the power wire goes to the two switches. The negative wire comes out, and it also connects to the switches, only because these switches have lights in them. Now, if there wasn't a light-up switch, you'd only need to run the positive wire to the switch. Now on this side from this switch this positive wire comes out runs to the USB and the voltage so this switch is going to turn these two on and of course we have a negative coming back 
to the central negative from the voltage. This switch here is going to be for your amplifier. So we're going to have a hot wire coming from the switch and a ground wire coming from the ground to the amplifier, which turns on the amplifier. And then you have your inputs right here for your two speakers. Now, if you were going to be doing this with an FM radio, also the circuitry would be a little bit different. You would have this switch here also turning on and off the FM radio would be connected to the circuit. Now, for the relay to work, the power supply is what turns on and off the relay. So what happens is when you plug in the power supply, it automatically sends power to 5 and 6, which 5 is positive, 6 is negative, but it also sends power to 14 and 13. 13 is always going to be negative, 14 is going to be positive. What happens is normally power is not allowed to flow through 5 and 6. But when power is applied to the power ports on the relay, the relay is going to switch. The relay now disconnects the battery and allows 5 and 6 from the power supply to come through 9 and 10 and to power the circuit. So as long as the power supply is plugged in and turned on, it's going to be powering these items right here. Now, this setup works perfectly fine if you're not using a radio that you want to keep memory on because there is a delay when the power supply goes off so in that delay nothing is hooked up so if you wanted to hook this up with a radio like I have in the mega boom box you would have to put a switch right here in this location to manually turn off the power supply first before you unplug it and then it would instantly cut the power and allow the battery power to come through instantaneously saving everything on your build. Now if you're just doing Bluetooth like I am here with this amp or even if you have an FM tuner and you don't care about the the station memory which I really don't worry about that you can just go ahead and leave this set up like it is. Now the cool thing also is with this setup, now I didn't draw it over here but you can also, let me get my green marker here actually I can get my red and black Oh, heck, where's my black marker? Here we go. You can actually have a positive and a negative coming in to a charging port right here. And that's where your, your power, uh, your charging cord is going to plug in. So, let me find the uh, charger real quick here. Now, this is your this is your battery charger that comes with your power supply, I mean your battery, pardon me, and that would normally charge your battery. So what we do is this, this line right here is going to be this line right here, but actually it would actually be tied in, I kind of screwed that up, it would actually be tied in right here, jump over the hot right there, and then you would have your negative wire jump across and go right here so forget this right here so anyway that's how it would charge the battery so you have it connected before it goes into the relay not afterwards because you're gonna have power supply coming through this side or also battery power so by putting the junction point before the, the relay you can actually charge the battery why this is hooked up because when this is hooked up what's going to happen is the battery is totally disconnected from the circuit so plugging in your battery charger to this port right here which is going to be something like that on the out sticking out on the outside that's th that's not going to affect this in any way because the relay has disconnected the battery while the power supply is on so while the power supply is running your circuit and you're listening to it in the house, the battery can be also charging in the house. So whenever you get ready to go outside, all you have to do right here is just, um, again, you're going to have another plug just like this coming to the outside for the power supply. So all you have to do is unplug your power supply. You're now on battery power and you can take off and take it out in the yard or wherever you want to take this. So that's how this circuitry works. It, it's not that difficult. Like I said, um, if you can, take a picture of this off the video 
and just study it or pause the video and just kind of look at everything. Again, all these pins are numbered on the relay, but they do go in a line. So again, if you make uh, one positive, two negative, power the battery, six negative, five positive for the power supply, and 14 is always positive, 13 is always negative, which is going to give you nine positive, 10 negative on your pins. Those are the, now, there are extra pins on this relay, but for this setup, this is that's all you need to do. You don't need to worry about the other pins, which would be 3, 7, 11, and 4, 8, and 12. You don't have to worry about those pins whatsoever. They're irrelevant to this setup. So anyway, let me move the camera one more time and I'll kind of show you guys what the wiring looks like on the bench because if you do decide to do something like this, you want to bench test it before you put it into your setup. And let me move the camera one more time and I'll show you what it looks like and I'll be right back. Okay everybody, now here's what it looks like in real life. Uh, now what we have here is here's the Droke amplifier, here's the power coming from the switch like I showed now I didn't put the USB port and the voltmeter in this setup you really don't need to unless this is the first time you're hooking this up and you want to get everything wired up together you can I don't need to because I just wanted to simplify the circuit because all I really wanted to make sure was that the relay was going to work in this setup so let me show you what we got going on over here okay here's the battery over here and here's the charging port I was telling you about that will charge the battery. And you see how it goes to the battery first before it comes into the relay. It's tied together. Now over here, as you can see, like I said, I know it's like a jumble of wires right here. But as you can see right here, we have the input port right here. So this is the power supply right here plugging in like that. And... Now it comes through and does one of two things. The black and the red wire or the power wires coming in or these are going to be five and six right here. Over here at the bottom you got this uh, pink wire and you got this yellow wire which as you can see they tie in right here coming from the power supply so it actually splits. And what these two do is these actually turn on the relay as we talked about. So what happens normally is if the battery is on in the on position and we have a, of course we still have an on and off switch because you don't want everything turning on all the time. So what happens is when the, when the power comes out of the relay which is going to be this purple wire, this pink wire which is the hot, of course you always want to go through a fuse before you hit any of your components. You don't have to fuse it before the relay unless you just want to. Because you're not going to fry the relay unless you really hook everything up backwards. But you do want to put a fuse in here just in case you do hook everything up backwards. Now if you fry the relay, they're not that expensive. They're only $9. So if you feel more comfortable putting a, a fuse before the relay, go right ahead. It's not, it's not going to hurt anything. So right now, we've got our battery turned on. So right now, the battery power is coming through the relay and it's running to the switch and over here to the amplifier. Now I've got the amplifier hooked up to this old boom box that I built, one of my first ones. I'm just using it strictly for the speakers that are on both sides. So if we turned on the switch, this would be like if we were in portable mode, and you'll hear the amplifier come on. Bluetooth mode. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and turn off the switch. Now, what we're going to do is, we want to make sure the power supply is going to work. So what we're going to do is, we're going to go ahead and unplug the battery altogether. So now the battery is not hooked up to the circuit. So now we're going to take our power supply, which is already plugged in to our port. We're going to take the cord here, find it, and we're going to plug in the power supply. Power supply is now plugged in. I don't know if you heard that click, but that little click means that the relay just tripped. So now you're on power supply power only. The battery's unplugged, so the only way this amp's going to work is through the power supply. So let's turn on the switch and see what happens. And there it goes. Bluetooth note. 
Now I'm going to turn the switch off and you're going to hear a click and that's going to be the relay switching back. It takes a second. Well actually no, I got to unplug the, the power supply. So I plug, plug the power supply you'll hear the click. I don't know if you heard that little click. I'm going to plug it in one more time so you can hear it. You hear the little click? I don't know if you can hear it on the video. And I just unplugged it. And you can see little things in there moving. Now, we're going to go ahead and hook everything up. So we're going to go ahead and plug in the battery. Battery is turned on. And I'm going to show you what we can do here. Now we can actually, at the same time, now what you want to do is you don't want to plug in your charger in, unless you're running off power supply power. So now what we're going to do is we're going to plug in the power supply. And now we're going to plug in our charger to our battery. Alright. Now the lights are coming on telling me that the battery is now charging. And we're, we're just now on power supply power. Turn it back on. And there it goes. So the nice thing is we can actually charge the battery Bluetooth mode. while we're still listening to the boombox. So if you want to listen to it in the house but your battery's dead from being played all day, you can actually do both with this circuit. Now we're going to go ahead and turn this off. I'm going to go ahead and unplug the power supply. Amplifier just clicked back. Battery's still charging. We'll go ahead and unplug that. And again, these ports are going to be sticking through the wall, but you'll see that on the next video how I have everything hooked up. So go ahead and turn off the battery and that's basically it ladies and gentlemen. So I hope this is, I hope I explained everything well. If you have any questions please ask me in the comments or uh, if you guys want to join the discussion on my Facebook group it's called I Love All Things Radio. That's the best place to ask questions and post pictures of your builds. We've got a great team of men and women that are building some fantastic builds, and we'd love to see yours. I love this stuff. So this is part three of the video, guys. Uh, part four, it will be finished, and I'm going to show you how all this comes together, and we're going to do a sound check, and I've got some special treats that I'm going to do to the box that I haven't told anybody about yet. So stay tuned for part three. So... Thanks guys for watching, I mean part four, pardon me, this is part three. So stay tuned for part four of the video. Please subscribe to my channel and click that little button right there, the little bell, so you can get updates every time I put out a new video. Uh, new videos every week. And I hope you guys learned something. Now, if this is over your head, that's perfectly understandable. This is a little bit complicated. This is advanced electronics. This is not basic electronics. Uh, using relays, I mean, it took me... A while to get all this figured out myself but once you do it, it it's actually quite simple I mean I think the hardest part of this project is going to be soldering these joints right here on on the connector so what I do my little solder trick is I solder the inside there first and then I put some solder on the wires I tend the wires and then they'll just glue themselves together with the solder so soldering is not that difficult so of course, it's going to look a lot prettier when I have it inside the box, all the wiring. But I love this Droke amplifier. So, guys, if you use this Droke amplifier, it's going to come with a power supply. And why not use it? I mean, shoot. So, that's just a great way to add another feature. Now, if you guys are building, selling these, uh, just like I do, this is a great thing to offer to your customers. And you can add a little bit uh, to your pocket, too, because you can, you know, up the price a few dollars installing the relay but again that's really all it's going to cost you is the cost of the relay and the cost of a couple of connectors so you're looking at about ten dollars to your parts cost because the the amplifier I mean the charger comes with it not the charger the power supply pardon me and of course your, your lithium battery comes with the charger so for an extra ten dollars in parts you could probably add another twenty thirty dollars to the price and give your customer one that they can plug into the wall and they can take with them. So it's a great feature to have. And I think we're going to get a visit from Duke. Let me see here. Let me pull back the camera. And uh, yes, there's there's Mr. Duke. And let me 
Pull him back a little bit. Let me see. I'm trying to... Hello, Duke. Now, this is your first time seeing my, my videos, which I hope not. I hope you watched part one and two. This is Duke, and he's usually the star of the show. I've had Duke for about seven and a half years now. Got him when he was a baby. He was uh, born to a stray cat on my front porch. And Duke is my right-hand man. He's he's my buddy. And he's really cool, and he's, he's very laid back, and he loves being on camera, don't you, Duke? So, anyway, so a little mug for the camera. <laughs> Say hi, Duke. All right, everybody. Duke says thanks for watching, and we will talk to you guys later. Stay tuned for part four coming up very, very soon, and we'll see this project finished. And if you haven't seen parts one and two, please go, please go watch those. And I think you'll enjoy them. This is a fun project, and um, I think anybody can do it. Just a little practice. Just make sure you bench test everything. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.